Yo, what I do guys and welcome back to another Warframe Academy video. Now in this video, I'm just going to go over typical melee builds and I'm also going to go over uh, debuffing weapons and the word primer. What does it mean and how does it affect the meta of Warframe? So let's go ahead and just jump into it by showcasing a traditional melee weapon straight away because the new core is going to be the more important part. But let's go towards the melee weapons right now. I get a lot of people who ask me, how should I go and build my melee weapon? Um, I'm not joking when I say this, around 90, that's 90 zero around 90 percent of melee weapons can typically take a build like this but there are a few alternatives that you can go and change and i'm just going to talk about which ones you can go ahead and change and the reasons why you would change them so let's begin with the elementals now we're in a viral meta uh, the reason why we're in a viral meta is because um this is this right here is status so it basically means on here um you've got a 40 percent chance to go ahead and get an elemental proc well the viral proc um so if i can put this uh, in here the viral proc basically amplifies damage to health and it would basically increase any other elemental that does damage to health as well so for example when slash procs it bleeds the enemy and that bleed is true damage it kind of ignores the armor ignores the shield it just does consistent damage uh, all over uh, uh, over all factions so viral is really good to basically enhance slash and no matter what faction you're going against it's just going to be devastating against all of them so you can use something like viral for example now you might be asking okay but why you're not using viral on your melee weapon it's because i actually have viral on my debuffer weapon but if i wasn't using my debuffer weapon then typically this is how most builds would go ahead and look in my opinion so i'm actually using corrosive right now uh, because i'm putting my viral stacks on my secondary which i'll show you in a second so corrosive is what i'm using um, this is going to be for the condition overload that I'll explain in a second as well. Now, over here, we got Blood Rush and we got Organ Shatter. These are your criticals. Critical damage is going to be self explanatory here. It just basically increases the amount of damage that you're doing bonus wise per hit. So, if I happen to go in every 35% chance as I'm as I'm hitting once, I got a 35% chance going to do bonus damage. This is increasing that bonus damage. Okay. This is also increasing the amount of uh, damage my slash proc would do. So, every single bleed tick, um, this is increasing those bleed ticks. Now, this here is increasing my crit chance now typically um there are some critical mods inside the game um if i was to go ahead and use a true steel um you can see that this would bump my build from 35 percent to 77 and if i was to use a sacrificial steel it would go from 35 to 112 now that looks really impressive but here's the thing blood rush scales even further than that because of the way that i've got a uh, great crit chance here i believe i got to about 266 right now i'll just kind of uh, put on the screen um some scalar numbers that you can go and see here and i do have a discord channel as well if you guys ever want to go ahead and check it out um, i have a math section on my discord channel that i've already kind of calculated the base for you by every five so like 5 10 15 20 25 so forth all the way up until about like 40 percent crit um for you guys just to see um hey i've got 20 percent crit chance on my melee weapon if I had a combo counter of 12 for Blood Rush, what would I get? Um, rather than you having to do the maths yourself, you can always go and use that channel. It's nice and quick for you guys to go and pick up. So, I've got 112% here, which is impressive, but it's not as impressive as Blood Rush when it reaches the max combo counter right here. So, stacks with combo multiplier. My combo multiplier can go up to 12 when completely maxed out, and this will give me a much greater return than that sacrificial steal. So, how does that matter and why does that matter and when does that matter and so forth well within warframe there's critical tiers so that basically means if i was to on other games if i was to max out to 100 critical that just basically means i'm 100 critical i'm always going to deal bonus damage in warframe you can go over 100 critical this basically breaks down towards critical tiers um in this case uh this this build will go and put me into a crit tier 2 and it will have a chance to put me into crit tier 3 aka it basically just means instead of me hitting white numbers and yellow numbers i'm going to be hitting orange numbers and red numbers for every crit chance uh, tier that i'm going up i also can add that and multiply that towards the crit multiplier which basically just makes this even stronger so it looks like it's 480 it's not 480 right now it's even stronger than that i believe it's actually 680 i don't know if it is minus one um so it's either 580 or 680 but it basically goes up even further so by actually 
actually added more crit chance onto your builds. Not only is it nice to go and look at orange numbers and red numbers, but it's actually also increasing your damage uh, and your crit multiplier even more so. So we use Blood Rush, and uh, Blood Rush is just going to be great for scaling. Uh, now we also go and use Weeping Wounds as well. Because we are scaling, we might as well scale both of them. So just in the alternative version here, Weeping Wounds is for status, Blood Rush is for critical. So it doesn't look like that these numbers are bumped up right here, but believe me, they're bumping up, okay? So, how does it work for status? Status can also go over 100%, and the way that that would work is if I was to swing my weapon once and hit one enemy one time, I would basically have a 40% chance of proccing one element, okay? If I have this maxed out at combo count of 12, uh, let's say hypothetically I had 250% status, when I swing my weapon one time at one enemy, I get two elemental procs with a with a 50% chance of getting a third elemental proc. See, whereas this one, I only have a 40% chance of getting one elemental proc. So as my weapon uh, starts scaling, as my blood rush starts scaling, I get bonus damage, and I also go ahead and means I'm guaranteed elementals every single hit that I'm doing. Okay, now that's going to be very important for condition overloads because this is per status type effect in the target, which we'll kind of come to as a second. Now the next mod is Quickening. Why do I go ahead and run Quickening? Quickening is a situational mod. It's really up to you. Um, alternate, uh, alternative mods that you can go and use is Berserker. Some people like to go ahead and just go absolutely ferocious with their builds and go for as much attack speed as they can. I personally don't. Um, I just because I'm, I'm mashing my E button too much and I know that there might be one person out there who will say okay but you can bind your E button to your scroll wheel down yes you can do that as well and that's a good tip for people out there who might get a bit tired um, by mashing E on their keyboard you can just bind it towards your scroll button down on your mouse and just scroll down so you can just scroll ever so casually and it's not going to hurt your fingers or anything else like that um, now the other mod that you can go and use is Prime Fury um, again I'm still going with Quickening I believe in the thing that there is too much attack speed, especially for general missions. I'm prepared if I'm using Gauss or Valkyr, but if I'm not using Gauss and Valkyr, then I don't really like having a tremendous amount of attack speed. And here's the thing with this build, I'm going to delete enemies. Believe me, I'll delete them. Unless I was doing some heavy, heavy, heavy endurance and I was going for multiple hours, then I would probably go ahead and switch this out at that point. But the good thing about this as well is that it's got combo count chance, which means in every mission that I enter anew, and whenever I'm not building up my combo count and I'm just starting fresh to build it up, I get an extra 20% chance uh, to go and build up my combo count just a bit quicker with every hit that I'm doing, which basically means this is going to go ahead and max out to 12 quicker, this is going to max out to 12 quicker, I'm going to get to my damage cap way quicker. That's the reason why I go and use quickening. Finally, we've got, uh, uh, well, sorry, I say finally, uh, we've also got Prime Reach. This is very self-explanatory. Um, Prime Reach used to be a mod that was percentile, now it's flat. It's a great mod to run on basically every single melee out there. There's almost no reason to not run it unless the melee weapon itself wasn't affected by range. Uh, for example, uh, you might go and not put it on things like Redeemer basically. Uh, outside of that, you could pretty much go and run it on majority of melee builds. It's just a fantastic thing. Um, it makes you hit enemies further away, and it also makes you hit multiple enemies in one sweep of the weapon. So it's great. And then finally, we've got condition overloads. Now, as I was speaking about earlier, about um, the uh, weeping wounds onto condition overloads and increasing the amount of chance and every single hit that I'm doing, uh, I can proc elements on them. Condition overloads, unlike prime pressure point, if I put that in there, you can see I guarantee an increase. That is 165% flat melee damage. That's it. That's all I'm ever getting from the mods. However, condition overload is 120 per type. Uh, per status type affecting the target. So I've got four status types here. So if I was to hit, my first hit would do very little damage. But if it happens to proc an element on them, then it's going to go ahead and start increasing the damage that I will be doing the next, the next, the next, the next, you get the idea. So from on here onwards, it's going to go and get better. So in this case, it's 120, 240, 360, 480. So this is 165 versus 480. So this is just 480 here. On my Kuba Nuka, I've also got another four elements, which is 960, which I'll show you in a second. So I've almost got a thousand damage coming off my condition overloads. Now, some things that can affect condition overload, I'll put them up on the screen here real quick, are gonna be things like, um, your elements, your physicals, so impact, puncture, and slash. It's gonna be your four flats, um, heat, toxin, 
cold and electric. It's going to be your six combines, corrosive, blast, gas, magnetic, radiation, and viral. It's also going to go ahead and be void damage, um, or void proc. It's also going to go ahead and be microwave beam effect. This is where the Cuba Nucle comes in bold. Um, and it's also going to go ahead and be uh, lifted or knocked down enemies. You can either lift them or you can knock them down. But if they're lifted or knocked down, that's also included as another status effect. I don't believe I missed any there, but for the most part, I think it's around like 16. Uh, basically, that, that can almost reach 2,000 percent melee damage if you was to have all of those ele uh, elements on one target all of those statuses on one target this mod is very very good it used to be capped uh, to three per target uh, then they kind of revisited it and rechanged it and ever since they did that it's just made this mod absolutely monstrous so wonderful mod to go and use definitely want to go and use it for endurance purposes endurance running um loadout builds and loadout keep in mind um Keep in mind as well, the it, uh, the status type affecting the target doesn't have to come just from the melee. It basically means if, if I'm using the Warframe ability, or if I'm using the primary or a secondary, and I go and proc status on that target, then whenever I hit with my melee, then I get bonus damage from it. This isn't restricted to just the elements from the melee weapon, okay? Um, when you would use things like Prime Pressure Point, for example, is uh, you would use it on purely critical builds that had very, very little to no status. Uh, you would use it on stat stick related builds for pseudo exalted abilities and um, you'd probably go ahead and use it on slash related builds where you would want slash procs to deal the most devastating instant slash proc as high as it can right there and then. Um, besides from that you don't really do it for the most part it makes more sense for me to go and tell you as a TLDR for you to just go and run condition overload genuinely because it is just very very good. Oh you would also go and run this on the heavy builds and here's an example of a heavy build um, because you're not really looking to use statuses on that one and again this is critical so we're leaning towards that this is going to be slash heavy so you can see how a heavy build would actually utilize prime pressure point better than what something like condition overload would but there is a difference between the two mods and there is a situation where you would go and use one over the other but for the most part and for the general builds you can go and use condition overload okay hopefully i've explained all of those mods nice and quick so we now move over and remember condition overloads we now move over to kuva nucor so Kuva Nucor. Let's go and have a look at its builds. First things first, why do we use Kuva Nucor? Number one, it chains towards multiple enemies on hit. And number two, it also has an uh, an innate uh, beam on it as well. Um, so keep in mind, although there's four elements here, there's actually a fifth element on this weapon, which means that that does actually bump my condition overload over a thousand damage if all of those elements on there. So in just two weapons, I almost have nine elements that could be procced. So the Kuva Nucor itself has a microwave beam effect and i have tested this i've been doing this with uh, a comparison of the sinori gamma core in comparison to the kuva nu core and you'll kind of have to notice if you use condition overloads um with the same elementals on both of them, you'll actually do more damage with the Kuva Nu Core with the Condition Overload than what you do with the Sinoid Gamma Core. It's because of the microwave beam effect. Now, I know what you might be thinking, and just real quick, um, there is a mod in the game called Peculiar Bloom, if I can find it. A uh, Peculiar Bloom. Uh, no, sorry, Peculiar Growth. Damaging the enemy will, in, it, uh, will inflate the body part here for six seconds. This is also a microwave effect. But before you go and say it, no, unfortunately, this doesn't actually go ahead and give you the microwave effect. Visually, yes, but the actual effect itself, no. It doesn't go ahead and give you an extra boost in status. I don't know if this is something that will be changed or if it's always going to be like this, but either way, it's very, very good. So it can link to multiple enemies. I believe it's like five base. Um, so multiple enemies, five more than other weapons. And you can also go ahead and uh, give a microwave effect, which will also increase your condition overloads. Plus that, and the fact that um, Kuba Nucor is a weapon that comes from Kuba Liches, it innately has radiation on it. And if you want to understand how Kuba Liches work, inside the video description below, I will go and uh, tie my Kuba uh, Lich Guide and everything you need to know about Kuba Liches, how to get a weapon, how to change the element on that weapon, where to farm them, how to kill the Liches, so forth. I'll have that inside my uh, video description, but in this case, I put Magnetic on it, which means I used a Progenitor Warframe that gave out Magnetic. So for example, Mag. Okay, so I, I killed the Lich Lavalin with Mag. And from there onwards, I started working with the Magnetic. Now, why did I use Magnetic? Uh, magnetic is basically an element at this point that I don't care about. It's a throwaway element that I just want it to proc 
I just want it to proc. It will also be good against corpus as well, though. So we'll actually go and kind of lower their shields a little bit. So it means I'll do more damage against them. But for the most part, um, it's just an element that I don't care too much about. And um, it will help my condition overloads. Okay, it'll be better than just using gas here in retrospect. But otherwise, it will be a good element, uh, again, against corpus and just for uh, helping my condition overload. So radiation and magnetic. Now, as for the rest of my weapon, if I can show you here, I'm now using viral and heat. Viral, as mentioned earlier, is because the more viral stacks that I have on the target, the more damage uh, I amplify to their health and heat, um, because heat is very, very good right now. Heat as an element can do about like four different things, I think it is. It does damage, damage over time, it does crowd control, it does armor strip. It's it's very, very good right now. So to put viral and heat together with the radiation magnetic, with the uh, microwave beam, which you don't see in here as well, will be increasing your uh, Kuva Nucor to five elements. Now, as for the rest of the build, you're kind of looking at it, you'll notice, okay, but why don't you have things like Hornet Strike? Why don't you have damage, actual damage mods in here? Um, okay, so let's go and break this down. So first things first is we've got the status mods in here, okay? So we got short shot, we got frostbite and um, pistol. And these will go ahead. So we got the cold and the toxin. This combines towards the viral. We've then got heat, which then uh, adds, adds towards heat at the end. So I've got my four elements. Uh, then I increase the status chance even more. So right now, if I didn't have anything else, just ignore all these four, I have 185% chance that every one second that I'm ticking with the Kuva Nucor as a continuous beam weapon, um, I have a 185% chance that I'm going to put one guaranteed element on them and an 85% chance that I'll put another element on them. So I've almost got two, I've almost got two elements every second or every tick that the continuous beam weapon is doing. Okay. So from there onwards, now what happens? Well, I want to go ahead and lower that tick rate. I want to go and lower just how quick I can go and get those elements proccing off on. So anemic agility is basically for the fire rate. This is in the same way that you would just go ahead and explain fire rate across all borders for all weapons. I'm basically looking to go ahead and speed things up. Okay, so in this case, I'm looking to speed up my ticks. I'm looking to go ahead and lower that uh, overall rate and go ahead and get them off nice and quick. From there onwards, I've got multi shot. How does multi shot? I've also got fire rate on this one as well. So, how does multi shot affect beam weapons? Now, general rule of thumb is it doesn't add beam, it doesn't add extra beams to beam weapons. Hear me out. Now, there are a few examples where it does actually visually add extra beams to the beam weapons. But in this case here, with the multi-shot, if I go and shoot real quick, you'll notice there's only one beam coming out, okay? But what you're not seeing is that in this one beam is another damage instance. There's technically another beam inside the beam its own sense, right? So this is where the damage instances um, help your probability factors for your status. Right, let's go and break that down. So if I have 100% multi-shot, right? I have a 100% chance that I'm creating a new damage instance. What does that mean? It means I've got one damage instance that's basically rolling the dice and every second or every tick that it's doing, it's got a 185% chance to try and proc two elements. And I've got another damage instance that's also being shot through the weapon, okay, because of the multi-shot, that is also doing its own 185% chance, okay? Now, if I take 20% and 60% here for the extra 80%, it means there's a chance for me to have three beams kind of coming out and doing their own thing in towards an enemy, and all three of them could be having their own chance to go ahead and be doing 185%. So basically, you're increasing the probability of you doing more and more statuses. You can see now how I would be able to build up um, uh, sorry, you'd see now how I'd be able to go and build up uh, status procs on enemies really, really quick. So um, I'll explain the last mod in a second. So let's go ahead and just see this in effect so that you guys can go ahead and understand just how quick this thing builds up stacks. Ready? So one, two, three, go. Okay, I'm already 10 stacks of viral, just as quick as that. I've got six stacks of heat there, two radiation, five magnetic. Now, if I was to hold that just for a bit longer, there you go. That's all like all 10 stacks there with 67 on the uh, heat as well. Now those radiation, magnetic and viral don't go any higher than the 10 stacks. So the idea is that we mostly just want as many different elements to proc as quick as possible. Quick click, there's all four elements, done. Just a quick click like that, that's all it took. So you ready? Done. Oh, I didn't get the fourth one there, but you get the idea. It's still incredibly impressive to go ahead and get them off in like one very quick click like so. So wait for the radiation to go. 
There you go. There's all four. So the idea now is we want that viral to reach 10, and now that viral's reached 10. So from there onwards, our melee would be doing a significant amount of damage uh, from our heat on the new core and from our slash on the melee itself. So as for the last thing we've got in here is the eject magazine. Now this is a huge quality of life improvement that I heavily encourage you to take on your Kuva new core. Um, this basically means when I shoot with my weapon, watch this. So I shoot, I shoot, I shoot. Now look at the bottom right. I currently have 60 out of 210. If I go and do a couple of melee attacks and then come back, I'm reloaded so back to 77. So I shoot a bit more. And, then, and now I need to go and kill them to do my melee attacks. And then I come back and I'm reloaded again. So it's a good way to go ahead and just basically reload you uh, in the background as well. Uh, keep in mind, you can go and use uh, mods on other things. So for example, I've also got holstering primary and secondary weapons here um, on my Helios. Um, and also this will uh, also scale off. Sorry, I'm kind of jumping all over the place with the guide right now. I apologize, but um, this will also go ahead and be like a miniature blood rush, which can also scale off the Naramon, which I'll come to in a minute. I don't know why I'm jumping to that right now. Um, <laughs> let's, let's focus on one thing, but the Eject Magazine is an absolutely wonderful quality of life mods going to throw in here okay it's just it's amazing uh, you take that out of the build and oh my goodness then it's kind of annoying because you have to kind of stop what you're doing to get a reload in there so anyways hopefully that makes you understand as to what we're doing the kuba new core now i want you guys to understand the last mod in here which is punch through and i was talking about how it can chain to essentially five enemies or so so let's go and shoot an enemy in the foot and let's go and see how many this can chain to you ready there so one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we got five, all right? So it's chaining towards five enemies there. That's interesting. We do it one more time for a fair test so that you guys can visually go and see this because we've got to make sure everything's a fair test. You can't just do it one time. You want to do it more than once at least. So one, two, three, four, five. From here onwards, I want you to take my words that it's essentially going to be the same result, okay? However, we're going to change that result real quick. The way that we're going to do that is by adding punch through onto the weapon. Now, I'm going to aim straight down the middle. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm now hitting nine of them because I added punch through through it. So the punch through is essentially clearing out this wave. Then I've basically got these ones that are being chained out afterwards. You can now go ahead and see just how that's affecting it. So PT here, punch through, you can also go ahead and help out your builds. Four, eight, nine, there you go. So go ahead and run punch through on it as well so that you guys can always go and test and see it your own self. And if you don't believe anything I'm saying in here, or if you do want to go and test it yourself, please be my guest, you know, because you always want to make sure that your builds are working. And if uh, you're ever catching this video a bit later in life, uh, God knows when, if they ever go and change it, uh, I'll always try and update this video as, as often as I can and let you guys know if things have changed. But uh, in case I don't or in case I couldn't get around to, then please go and test things yourself. Please go and test the microwave effect. Please go and test the you know, reload, whatever it may be, the punch through. Uh, how many enemies it links to, you get the idea. So, as you can now go and see, that's why the, that's why we're going to use this as a debuffer. Now, I want you guys to physically see just how much damage this now does, okay? So here's the moment of, of all of it. And thank you guys for sitting patiently through this because I really wanted to explain this rather than just showing you the damage and then the builds. Uh, now you have the full explanation of it. So let's go and put these enemies together. Right now, I'm just building up my combo counter. So don't worry about the damage, but you will happen to notice uh, that I am hitting red numbers and so forth there. And just a minute ago, I wasn't hitting red numbers. I kind of started off with some whites and then the whites went into yellows and so forth. Can I reset that so you guys can see that again? No, I can't. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So that's the Blood Rush basically scaling up. So now pay attention to how long it takes for me to kill them with just my melee weapon. Okay, let's go. Okay, now in retrospect, that's good, right? That's, I mean, that wouldn't be too bad, you know? But in Warframe, unfortunately, that's not good enough. <laughs> this game is about efficiency. This game's about getting rid of your target as quick as possible, but it's still good. So we do it one more time, just so that you really feel the difference. Okay. Okay, awesome. And now what we're going to go and do is use the Kuva New Core on it first and then use the melee weapon because that's what it's all about, right? It's applying those extra elements. So here we go. Oh, so those guys left. You can see the huge difference in that, right? You can see the huge, huge difference. One more time. You guys to physically go ahead and see it. And this is where you guys can do your own testing as well. So bam, bam. Right, there you go. And then we're going to do the Kuva New Core. Okay. So, 
Now you can start to understand the idea of a debuffer weapon. I get a lot of people who come by to my streams and they say to me, why don't I use primary weapons? Uh, why don't I use other secondary weapons and so forth? It's mostly because I, I just don't want to. Um, this may be a meta that will more likely change soon because I'm not trying to go and get it nerfed. I'm not trying to go and do anything like that. That's not my point. Um, but it's just, it's very, very nice. Oh my goodness. Uh, I enjoy melee in the first place ever since the rework of melee. And this just basically amplifies my melee even further. So using Warframes that can go and group enemies together and so forth just makes it even better. Um, but yeah, hopefully I've explained pretty much all of that. There was one other thing to go and say here as well is the whole Naramon and the whole combo count and combo duration and so forth. Um, to keep these up as long as possible, use the Naramon focus school because now my focus score has got a power spike i'm not too sure if i did mention this earlier but the melee combo count now decays while we're out of combat by five seconds rather than completely de uh, decaying uh, this basically means you'll keep your blood rush and your weeping wounds up way more often instead of just completely losing them they'll always be there okay at your side and then as i kind of unfortunately jumped on towards this part earlier i'll just finish off what i was saying um this basically acts as a miniature blood rush uh, the comp the the passive at the bottom there you won't get the attack speed you won't get the crit damage and you won't get the duration but you do get the 30 percent uh, critical chance per combo multiplier and this here is 60 percent critical chance per combo multiplier so this is basically a miniature blood rush except from this stacks onto blood rush so you got 30 and you got 60 it's giving me a 90 outcome okay this basically makes this basically makes sure that instead of me just doing uh oranges here um i'm always hitting reds instead because of the two builds so hopefully this video Video helped you guys now if you do have any questions and i probably expect a couple of questions because the video is quite long and forgive me for taking so long on the video i really hope that you did find it interesting and i'm also really hoping that it did help you because that was the whole point of doing this video was to break it down so you guys understand what to take why to take it and how it's effective and how it will help you um, but thank you so much for tuning in thank you guys so much for checking out the video uh, if you did like it please please go give it a like. I'm not asking for much. I don't know how many people will go and actually enjoy the video or learn something from it, but it's not much going to ask anyways. But uh, from now onwards, if you don't understand, leave, any, uh, leave a comment. If you think I did a good job explaining this, or if you think there's something that I missed as well, something that you want to go and add towards it, please go leave a comment below anyways, and uh, hopefully we'll go ahead and uh, spread that message and correct things if I did miss one or two things. But I try to do this all in one take and uh, explain everything as well and as in depth as I could. Uh, outside of that, if you are new to the channel and you like what you see here and you're having a good time, consider hitting the subscribe button. Come join us more often for more guides, more videos, tips, tricks, and so forth. If you do ever need other information, feel free to check out my Discord as well. It's got a plethora of builds on there and uh, again, tips, tricks, and guides. So I hope that helps you. But uh, ultimately, that's it from me, guys. Um, I'm always streaming over at twitch.tv forward slash sympathy. So feel free to come hang out over there. And if you do need any links or if you do need any timestamps, anything else like that, it's always down, down in the, uh, sorry, I can't talk. It's always down in the description below. But that's it from me today, guys. Thank you so much for being here. I'll catch you guys again in the next video.